Hello, today is June 7th, 2014. I'm Jeffrey Tennant. I've had some more time to look at the market. Let's start out by going over what happened the last few days. On the 5th of June, Thursday, we had a MIJT target of 1927.70. I said there was an increased risk of failure, and it did fail, but it should print at some time. There's also an optional target from that date of 1938.38 minus. This was close enough to the actual target to qualify as a direct hit. When there is a direct hit, it's common to have a move of 8 to 10 points. We had a move of 11, and that's close enough. So this is an, this is an, um, an area recognized by the MJT system as resistance. It doesn't have to hold, but it's time for us to reassess what happens at this price. Let's see how the software performed. These dot dash dot dash lines tell us we have an optional target of 1938.37. It said right here that ultimately higher prices would print. The thick line gave the target. The white, the white a dot identified the target as being hit. The F said the move was false and would not stick. A thick line identified the new target. The white lines, the white dots identified when it was hit, and there was support under the target. So that worked reasonably well. MJT is a day trading system, so it doesn't have to give long-term predictions. We still have this 1927.70 target. I think it's a long shot, quite a long shot, for that to print uh, Monday. So let's look at some other forms of technical analysis and see if we can come up with a prediction. On the 130-minute chart, we have a 9, 13, 9 sequential sell signal, but if it goes a little bit higher, we'll have a recycle and have to start the count all over again. Pretty hard to rely on that. On the half-day chart, we have a sequential sell signal as well, but it's in the pace of a combo cell signal which didn't really yield anything. This could become a, another nine bars of setup which would uh, restore the validity of the combo cell. On the daily chart, which is the most critical one, we have 10 bars of Tom DeMarc's combo cell, three more, not necessarily consecutive gives the cell. I personally would not trust it if we had failures on shorter time frames. On the weekly chart, we have a combo cell and we are one bar away from a sequential cell which can become, which can occur early. We don't have to wait for the whole week to end. So that's a very strong resistance area. On the monthly chart, we're continually recycling, but this is the 13th bar of a combo cell signal from Tom DeMarc. Let's copy this chart and do a little finagling. And we will see that Friday's high is a Fibonacci target of the prior consolidation. That's a very significant 
uh, target and it helps us come up with a prediction we're at a strong resistance area a rally right to the high of the day at a time when all but the amateurs have packed up their bags and gone home is always suspect and there's a high likelihood at least 50% of a gap down that's in conflict with the rule that a trending Friday closing at the high typically follows through Monday I strongly suspect that we are going to get some follow-through to today's to Friday's high at some time but this is a strong resistance area and by the middle of next week if the rally continues we either will hit a top based on DeMarc's work and if it if, and if we do not hit a top DeMarc's work says we're going to explode to the upside so we're going to have a very critical time coming up for next week and Monday's open should be critical there's at least a 50% chance of a gap down but even if we have it I personally don't think that the rally's over if we go only slightly higher over the next few days that could be a good top but if we go a lot higher over the next few days I think the mark salt signals are prone to failure and we could have a very strong move higher so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens next week and that's today's call